Well, thanks for having me. Um, I don't know if any of you got to see the abstract uh, that Noah sent out, um, but I, I'm very interested in issues of uh, success of uh, historically underperforming groups in physics and science education, and uh, that's what brought me here to see you uh, and, and sort of landed me over in the School of Education because that's where I thought I could best address uh, my research interests. And uh, so I'd like to talk about that today, and, and more importantly, I think, um, I'd like to get feedback and information from you as a community of, of scientists and experts. So um, not only do I want to share what I have with you, but I want something from you too. So on that line, um, I think I'd like to start with a conversation about communities of practice. So many of you have been laboratory scientists, um, and all of you have been uh, involved in that in some way or another. So I'd like to uh, spend some time talking in small groups about what makes someone a physics or, for, for uh, the other disciplinary groups, a science expert. Okay, and, I, and I'd like to think about, I'd like us to think about this in terms of what are the, the common practices, what are the value practices that differentiate experts in this and the various communities that are here from other communities. I don't know if that's clear at all or clear as mud at this point. Does anyone have any questions Could about Could you define this community a little bit yeah. more? Um, <laughs> or is that our job? Yes, that is your job. <laughs> Say what is. But you're talking about science communities yes. rather than like, PER. Exactly, like okay. science experts. So a physicist, a chemist. From uh, like a historian, mm -hmm. literature well, specialist. Exactly, yeah. From, from a, a rock star, or an expert skier, or a community of uh, <laughs> crocheters, what, whatever it is, what makes a physicist a physicist? Yes, Lori. But the physics education could be part of the physics yes. community, right? Absolutely. Not, not well, I think we, at this point, that, that we will complicate the issue here in a little bit. But if you, for right now, I would like you to think physicist, chemist, very uh, well, can't think of education as chemist. I would like you to hold off on that. Okay. But I agree with that, the physics, uh, chemistry. And do um, you have a handout for us? I do. <laughs> but even the mic, I'm also thinking that part of what defines is actually doing. So maybe there's a difference between somebody who knows about physics and somebody who's a physicist. Absolutely. So, yes. Absolutely. Thank you, Charlie. So I have a handout here. If each of the small groups could try to come up with at least three value practices or identifiers, I guess, I think uh, focusing on what physicists do rather than what they are, I think, will be helpful for our conversation. All right. So are you joining our group or not? So okay. Is it cynical to say oh, man. Yeah. 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 All right. I will be the scribe, so I don't have to figure out what you have to say. What is it? What are the values? All the experts will say how to work here. So what is it? What do you There's a canon of physics right that is a form of knowledge that you have to know as well as tools like math and representation of more now. of content, so mechanics, you know, I mean, those are two separate things, but they can't so not going to with them and all of them at a certain base level, you know, and then maybe uh, the the Yes, canonical knowledge of a certain type, and then I would show the others are representations, like math. Um, math is a community, except 
myself. And it's a whole thing. It's like the D doctor, whereas this is the D Okay, so what about then, if we're going to go so, with, um, okay, what about <laughs> skills and oh. discourse oh. Oh. within the community? Right. That you got to know how to talk. You, you, you just don't run around and say whatever. Um, so this is the question that I would test on that. And concepts for them. Can I get to so the language is English, so uh, no. Well, right, I would say language is not even for the I don't know how it's going to be mapped. So, yeah. Well, you really analyze your data. Do we have concepts that you can say kind of cases? So I'm not sure what the question is. So it's conclusion and share that. The same idea as a concept gets off as we're in language. There's certain lexicons you certainly Are you a physicist? Are you an expert? What's a lexicon? Uh, it's a specific discipline-based set of uh, terms. Ooh, I like that. Maybe you have to be like new terms, just different usage. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah, so let me go to the culture, which is it's a historically evolving collective use of those tools and practices that have been used by businesses to learn the lexicon. But he wants to know what the value of practice is. But the definition of the discourse community is So how about scientific? There's some, uh, I'm going to be a controversial set of things that are consequential. Is it meant to be Tearing apart other people's arguments? No. No. I'm just weighing and understanding it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does that give you? Making everyone face claims. That's very different. Make everyone face claims. It's a different step to dispute and sort of choose some law. Ridiculous. I'm still making it. I'm still making it. Yeah, no, I was getting into the next part of the point. It's just that you can also be. Arguing and defending claims. Some of the lines are using logic. You don't argue and defend claims with them. No, it goes in all. Are we talking? Are, are you asking us to talk specifically about physics? And the value practices, you know, approaching things. No, 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 no. Well, I mean, I think the good thing about it is scientists more generally, if that's how they get to the evidence base. So we have three. They are commonly valued practices of expertise.
We're moving on to number one. Uh, we're moving on to number one. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yes. Part of a research community. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like, be in, in a research community or participate in a research community. Yeah. Okay. Did you guys have? Yes. Yeah. To go with the evidence and inquiry, um, seeking multiple paths of okay. support. You know, they, they don't just accept an answer, they, they want multiple pieces of evidence to okay. support an answer. So, requiring... Because um, I haven't a mind, I think, is how we categorize it. One of the habits of mind that we can have. Require, require, requiring multiple support for a claim? Multiple types of support for a claim? So, norms, norms for supporting claims with evidence. Is that right? <laughs> No? So knows it, it or right. does it, or what do you mean? It's just a thing, you're not saying what, hmm. what it is that's valued. The practice is more what we're talking about, is that, you know, they discover something, but they aren't satisfied with that. They will go try, do other trials, seek other paths to get to that idea of concept. They don't just accept it. Okay. So like investigating multiple plausible explanations or something like that? Yeah. falls under canonical knowledge, but we underscore the fact that this the understanding possessed by this expert is kind of set established by the community. Um, maybe I think that's what's meant by canonical. Okay. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. Anyone else? We also had a sorry, we also had asking questions. Asking questions? Asking investigatable questions, though, <laughs> not just asking well, questions. Quiet, I mean, it's important. You don't just run around asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> right. That, um, fair communication. Like fair communication. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I wanted to throw one out out there, which is to say, these are the people who um, represent define and in fact create these very norms that um, in the community. And there's a big question about create at the end. Um, so, but certainly define um, and, and put into practice those. Do you think that um, I'd follow. the right. non-experts that are just trying to follow those norms or do they impact those norms too? We don't know, and we thought it was I think they good. invent them for themselves, and I think they're not accepted into the community until they follow the existing sets of norms. So the classic would be, you know, Picasso is an expert painter who then chooses to break outside of the mold to create something new. The counterpoint to that would be maybe somebody like Garrett Lissy, um, who sits and surfs in Hawaii and then comes up with a new model of uh, string theory, which, you know, folks get super hot on but only because he's vetted by other experts right. um, who stand behind him and say that this is reasonable. So it's an interesting question about creating. Who's allowed to create? Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and I'll, one more that I don't Oh, yes, please. Uh, generating new knowledge. Okay. That's kind of important. Based on... <laughs> <laughs> but also, you know, based on, on existing work. Okay. Building on. Yes. We had a second one that is not there yet, which was approach problem solving with a related set of priorities or values. With a what set of priorities? A related set okay. of priorities or values. So between different communities of experts, that set of values might be similar. Uh, okay. So a particular way of approaching the problems? Okay. Okay, so please don't leave with those those sheets. I would love to gather them up and take them with me. Might we need them again? Or? Um, 
Oh yeah, hang on to them. We might want to uh, use them. Anyway. All right, so I think we've definitely got a good start on, on what a physics, or what an expert in a particular community does. And I think that it's no secret that um, access to membership in some communities, opportunities for that is much greater for some subgroups within our society than for others. Um, those differences are related to gender, as in you know, Lauren's investigations. And I think it's, it's uh, very well acknowledged publicly that we have a, a, a significant racial achievement gap and an access opportunity gap in this country. So um, to frame the problem, uh, the racial achievement gap is large and resistant. It's been around for as long as we've been measuring these things, and it hasn't changed much, and at certain times it's actually gotten worse. Uh, African Americans, Latinos, and Native Americans consistently perform below that, the level that Asians and whites do, and graduate at much lower rates. So here's something from NC, the National Center for Education Statistics. You can see that uh, African Americans, Latinos, and Native Americans um, graduate at a rate about 20% less than those of whites, and about 30% less than those of Asians for the school year 2006 to 2007. These numbers are somewhat controversial, and I think there's a, a big movement afoot to standardize how these types of things are calculated. And then more locally, and then more in the content areas that we are more concerned with, this, these are the CSAP science results here in Colorado. Uh, CSAP's the Colorado uh, State Testing Program. And this uh, upper left pie is the percent unsatisfactory. The upper right pie is the percent satisfactory. And the lower pie is the percent advanced or the highest achieving. Can you go through them because it's like hard to see? Oh, absolutely. So in the, in the lowest, lowest performing category, we can see that Native Americans, African Americans, and Latinos make up nearly 80% of the pie. In the, in, it gets a little better, or actually it doesn't get better. Uh, for percent satisfactory, uh, whites and Asians make up more than half of the pie. And for percent advanced, whites and Asians make up 76, three quarters of the pie of the highest achievers. I mean, you just can't look at this and not be shocked, even if you, you know it. You know, you know it, you hear it, it's just, just shocking. So, I would like to take some time to discuss among the small groups what some plausible, reasonable explanations are for this gap. And I, I know this is a sensitive topic, it's hard to talk about, we're, all of us are at various times in our lives afraid that we're going to offend somebody. Um, I just hope we can have a space here where we can be candid and open, because if we're not, then these conversations are, are pretty useless. 